This is a Jaguar XE SV Project 8, and it is quite simply absolutely insane. This is a regular streetcar that Jaguar offers for just under $200,000. It's based on the XE sedan, which starts around $40,000, or you can step up just a little to the $200,000 version. But this car justifies its price tag because it is the most powerful Jaguar ever made. That's right, not the XJ220 supercar, not the XJR15 supercar, not some sporty version of the F-Type or the XK. This little mid-sized sedan is the most powerful Jaguar in history. And it's also the fastest sedan ever to go around the Nürburgring. Ever. <laughs> I've wanted to review this car for a long time, and today, I'm finally gonna do it. I've borrowed this Project 8 from Jaguar San Diego, which is the Jaguar dealership here in San Diego. Jaguar San Diego has all of the latest Jaguar models, of course, but the real prize is this Project 8, because Jaguar made just 300 of these for the entire world, and Jaguar San Diego managed to track one down. And it isn't easy. I've been searching for a Jaguar XE SV Project 8 to review now for quite a while because everything about this car is ridiculous. For example, this is rarer than a Ferrari F50. Yes, that's right, there are more F50s out there than Project 8s. And, by the way, the Project 8 has more horsepower than an F50. And it's faster 0 to 60 than an F50. And it's faster around a racetrack than an F50. Let me just give you the numbers. The current BMW M3 maxes out around 450 horsepower. This has 600. Let that sink in for a minute. This is a car the size of a 3 Series, an Audi A4, with 600 horsepower. And yes, it is the fastest sedan ever around the Nürburgring. While Porsche and Tesla are engaged in this fight to see who has the fastest electric car around the Nürburgring, this thing is faster than both of them by 20 seconds. In fact, this is faster around the Nürburgring than a Huracan by five seconds. Of course, all this comes at a price. And for this car, that price is $200,000. Or close, the sticker price on this one is around 190. But that's almost five times the price of a base level Jaguar XE. So today I'm gonna take you on a tour of this car and I'm going to show you what $200,000 of Jaguar buys you. First, I'm going to show you around the Project 8, and I'm going to show you all of its interesting quirks and features. Then, I'm going to get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'm going to give it a Doug score. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the Project 8 with probably its most obvious quirk, and that would be the exterior stuff. If you get one of these, expect people to ask you about your modifications. I'm filming this video here in a parking lot. Two people have walked by, and both of them have asked me if I painted it myself and if I modified it myself. But indeed, I didn't. And in fact, this isn't paint. This is a vinyl decal, and it is meant to look like the Jaguar Leaping Cat going down the entire side of the car. Now, if you get a Project 8, I think you can get this deleted, but this car has it, leaving absolutely no question as to which brand makes this vehicle. And the exterior changes in this car aren't limited to that leaping cat on the side. By the way, it's on both sides. You have one giant leaping cat on the passenger side and another giant leaping cat on the driver's side. But if you think that's a lot, how about the hood where you have a giant SV or SVO for Jaguar Special Vehicle Operations? That takes up basically the entirety of the hood of this vehicle, and those cats take up the entire sides. Although it doesn't really take up the whole hood, instead it shares that with a stripe. This is a large stripe down the whole hood that says 
Project 8 on it. And this stripe continues down the entire car. These graphics are also vinyl decals, so they can be removed, but this is how this car comes from Jaguar, just covered in all sorts of graphics and decals to let everybody know precisely what it is. But while those stripes and graphics are by far the most noticeable revisions on the outside of the Project 8 compared to the regular XE, this car also has a lot of other changes, functional and just more substantial than those graphics. Starting back here, there are massive rear tires on this vehicle, 305 width tires, which is insane in a car this size. And that means you have massively flared fenders in order to account for those tires and cover them up so they don't go shooting rocks everywhere. And that means you have a lot of other changes that are required in order to accommodate these giant flared wheel arches. For example, these carbon fiber rocker panels that go down the side of the car. Now, a lot of cars have vertical rocker panels. This thing, they're basically horizontal in order to give the car enough width to match up with its flared fenders. In fact, they're so big that Jaguar has to print no step on them so people don't accidentally treat them as running boards. These are absolutely ridiculous looking rocker panels. It goes beyond that too. If you go into the back, you can see the flared fenders meet up with a completely revised rear end design. You have a much more aggressive rear bumper and you have a much more aggressive rear diffuser that really looks like something off a race car. And you also have this rear carbon fiber lip spoiler back here that looks like something out of a touring car racer. Once again, no step is printed on there to make sure nobody accidentally steps on there like to try to get into the trunk or unload something from a ski rack. I will say though, with all the changes that Jaguar made back here to make this car more exciting and more aggressive and to accommodate these wider wheel arches, there is one drawback. These tires are so wide that they end up kicking up all sorts of debris onto this little carbon fiber lip spoiler in the bumper. And so anytime you go anywhere, there's always gonna be rocks and dust accumulated on there. The rear tires in this thing are so wide, they need mud flaps. But undoubtedly, the most noticeable change back here over the regular XE is the giant rear wing. This thing is absolutely huge. With certainty, the largest rear wing Jaguar has ever put on any of its vehicles. You can see it's made out of carbon fiber and it says Project 8 on the side. Once again, to remind everyone of exactly what this vehicle is, I promise you this is something that everyone will think you added to this car to make your Jaguar look more like a Mitsubishi Evo, but it comes like this from the factory, and it's crazy. Of course, when I mentioned that the rear wing is the most noticeable change to the Project 8 over the regular XE, I'm saying that under the assumption that people haven't yet heard your exhaust because this exhaust note was very much designed to turn heads. Take a listen. That exhaust note is very much something you would not expect to find on a little luxury sedan the size of an Audi A4. But then again, neither is this front end. Of all the exterior changes to this car, I think the front end is the most insane because it really makes this thing look like a race car. There isn't just one carbon fiber lip spoiler, you have a second larger lip spoiler underneath that. And of course, it'll scrape on just about everything unless you're at the racetrack. But even more ridiculous than that is all the holes. You have the normal grill, then you have a huge grill under the normal grill, and then you have these two giant side grills full of holes. Also, the engine can take in as much air as possible in order to cool down. It's a very impressive front end design. Absolutely not something I would expect to see on a street car. And finally, we move on to the window sticker. So you can see that, yes, the sticker price is just under $190,000 for a Jaguar XE. It's almost unfathomable, but then again, this is far from a regular XE. A couple of interesting elements on the window sticker. One is that it reminds us that the rear wing is adjustable. Not just a crazy huge rear wing back there, but you can actually use tools to adjust it to your exact desired angle for your perfect 
track downforce. Another thing I absolutely love included in the window sticker you can see is the GoPro pack. You buy an XE Project 8 and it comes with a GoPro and a GoPro mount so that you can document your misdeeds as you drive around. Of course, it's intended to be used at the racetrack, but you can let it roll whenever you want. And next up, we move under the hood and you can see this car's massive engine. This is a five liter supercharged V8 that is crammed inside this relatively small car. I mentioned earlier it has 600 horsepower. It's actually 592 horsepower and 516 pound feet of torque. Just mind boggling numbers. Those would be huge numbers if they were in the Jaguar XJ full size sedan. They would be really huge numbers if they were in the Jaguar XF midsize sedan but here they are in the little Jaguar XE. It's just totally insane. This is essentially the Jaguar Hellcat. And in fact, just to give you a little more context on how much power this car has relative to its size, the base engine in Europe in the XE is a two liter diesel with 160 horsepower. And then this thing has 600 horses. So it's five times the price of a base XE, but it also has four times the power. So you kind of get where they're coming from. One other interesting item under the hood here is there's no plastic cover, there's no leaping cat, there's no excess of Jaguar emblems. In fact, I don't see a single Jaguar emblem anywhere under here. You just have engine. Frankly, that other stuff, I don't think they could fit it under the hood. And next up, we move inside the Project 8, where there aren't as many changes that distinguish it from the regular XE as on the outside, but there are a few, the most notable of which is the seats. You can see this car has these very grippy, tight sport bucket seats that you would traditionally expect to find in a two-seat sports car, like a Porsche GT3 or something like that. But here they are in a Jaguar sedan. They even have little holes in the backrest so you can put a harness through them. More on that in a minute. Now, these seats are tremendously supportive and they're meant to hug you when you go around corners so you don't slide around. They also say Project 8 in the headrest just so you have another reminder of what your special vehicle is. And of course that isn't your only reminder. You also have Project 8 printed on the door sill so when you open the door you're greeted by your Project 8 badge and at the base of the steering wheel once again there is another Project 8 badge to let you know what you have. But my very favorite special car reminder is at the center of the dashboard on the top you can see there's a badge that says Jaguar SVO and then it says one of 300 reminding you that you have one of just 300 of these globally which is an insanely small production run. Now aside from all that stuff the other changes to the interior are are fairly minimal. One is that you have an Alcantara steering wheel, although I think this is just a regular XE steering wheel wrapped in Alcantara. You also have some carbon fiber accents on the dashboard. There's some extra carbon fiber on the door panels. You have a little and in the area around the gear lever, just a little extra carbon fiber to enhance your sportiness. Now, one thing this car doesn't have is the track package. If you know about the Project 8, you may know that it is also offered with a track package that deletes the rear seats and instead there is a bar back there you can use to mount four point harnesses for the front seats. If you do that, it saves 30 pounds for better racetrack driving. The track package is not offered on the USA spec XE Project 8s, so none of the US models have it. It will only be available in foreign markets. Although it is worth noting that it was a track package car that set the Nürburgring lap record for a sedan, but is it even really still a sedan if you delete the rear seats in favor of a harness bar? I'm not entirely sure. Nonetheless, I guess it technically counts. And next up, a couple of other interesting interior items beyond all of the Project 8 changes. One of them is the button pulsing. Check this out. You get in the car and you can see the engine start stop button is pulsing. Jaguar claims this pulses to the exact rate of the heartbeat of a resting Jaguar, the animal. And that's why it's doing the pulsing. Me, I think it's kind of a gimmick, but 
I guess that's a fun little fact. And next up, speaking of buttons, move down in the center from that start stop button and you have a series of little images next to the gear lever. Those are the drive modes. Over on the right, you have eco and then comfort and then moving over there's dynamic and then the one with the helmet, that would be track. Now, if you put it into track mode using these little arrows over on the side of where all the drive mode images are displayed, you can then access the track mode settings in the infotainment system. You press this little helmet and then you can see all the track mode settings. We have a few different options in here. One of them is you can configure the drive mode of various different portions of the car, like for example, the steering, the accelerator, the engine, that sort of thing. You can also use the track portion of the infotainment system to turn on the timer. That would be like the stopwatch. If you're going around a racetrack and you wanna time your laps, you can do that yourself inside this little track portion of the infotainment system. Now, speaking of the infotainment system, it's worth noting it is a very small screen by the standard of other modern vehicles, including other modern vehicles from Jaguar and Land Rover, but it is a very good system. It's very responsive to your touch and relatively intuitive. It doesn't have an enormous amount of controls or features that will really wow you, but it does what it's asked and it has basically everything that you'll need. And the same is true of the gauge cluster screen. You can use these little steering wheel buttons over on the left to cycle through various different items in the gauge cluster. And you can see all sorts of car info and various configurable features like the heads up display and lighting and that sort of thing. But if you don't wanna see any of those settings that you can configure, you can go back to the default screen, which is, just a picture of your car. So you can drive along in your Project 8 and also look at your Project 8 while you do it. And one other interesting gauge cluster item worth noting is that one of the settings in there allows you to change your headlight pattern for left-hand drive or right-hand drive. This is a big deal if you live in the UK because British people often drive their cars to mainland Europe for vacations and then their headlights are screwed up. They're basically blinding drivers since they're on the wrong side of the road. Well, in this car, you just go into the settings and then the headlights reconfigure themselves. So that isn't a problem. Pretty cool. And next we move on to the back seat of the Project 8, where you will instantly notice some Project 8 related changes back here, starting with the fact that they've eliminated the middle seat. You don't need it if you have a Project 8. Instead, you have these two very heavily bolstered rear bucket seats on either side. These are some of the most heavily bolstered rear seats I've ever seen. I guess in case you want to take your whole family to the track so they won't slide around under hard cornering if they're sitting back here. Now, instead of the middle seat, you have a Project 8 logo in the middle where the rear seat would have been just as a reminder that you gave up your middle seat for a worthy cause. One other interesting item worth noting, not Project 8 related, but the switches on the climate control vents that allow you to move them around, they say Jaguar on them, which is a nice little piece of attention to detail. Now it has that up front, of course, but it also has that on the climate vents in the back seat. So Jaguar didn't just cheap out for the rear seat of this car, you still have that little Jaguar on the climate vent switch, even though it'll barely ever get used. And finally, one other important item worth noting back here is you don't really get all that much room in the back of the Project 8. The XE already is a fairly small car in back, but I think these bucket seats take up even more space. I had to put this one really far forward just so I could get back here. This is not a very roomy rear seat, but it is a rear seat nonetheless unless of course you delete it for the harness bar. And finally, we move on to the trunk of the Project 8. You pop open the trunk and you will quickly discover that it has nothing at all interesting in it. It is just a trunk, no cool Project 8 related details back here. Although it is worth noting that it's a fairly large cargo area for a car that beats the Carrera GT around the Nürburgring. And finally, we move on to one other interesting detail of the Project 8, specifically all of the features that it doesn't have. You would think that for $190,000, Jaguar would have made this car really fast, but also they would have installed basically every luxury feature they make. But instead, that's not the case. This car does not have an opening sunroof. 
It's fixed panel. It doesn't have a 360 degree camera when you're backing up. There's no heated seats in this car or cooled seats thanks to those sport buckets. You also don't have adaptive cruise control, just regular cruise. And then my personal favorite, put on the turn signal and you have a halogen rear turn signal. It's not even an LED. And get this, you also have a halogen front turn signal. This has to be the most expensive car being made today without LED turn signals. I guess Jaguar's response to all this though would be that they took all of the money that this car costs and they just put it towards the driving experience. So let's find out if that's true. Those are the quirks and features of the XE Project 8. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. I can't wait. All right, driving the XE Project 8. I've been very excited to drive this car because if you look at it on paper, it really is a Jaguar Hellcat. More than basically anything else is a something Hellcat aside from the actual Hellcat Hellcat. The Hellcat is of course insane with 700 horsepower, but this thing given its size is just as insane with 600. Now when it comes to Jaguar, you know, I don't pay that much attention to Jaguar as a brand. It's a, it's a brand that you know doesn't have that many compelling products, kind of in a slow period right now that's lasted a while. Um, but I started hearing rumblings about this thing, like, you know, fastest Nürburgring time, there's a 600 horsepower car the size of a 3 Series, they're only making 300, and I'm thinking, is all this stuff true? And then I started to really kind of focus on it, and I'm like, okay, this is something I need to, I need to test. Now, when you drive this car, when you, like, sit at a stoplight, you're just cruising around, it's rumbly. I'm driving it in race mode because I feel like that's what people will drive it in who buy it. You spend 190 grand for an XE, you want to get your money's worth. And in race mode, you can tell it's rumbly. The V8 is like, I'm going to gas it here. Okay, well, that's fast. Oh my God. You know, I, I knew this would be fast. Oh my God. First off, it sounds amazing. It sounds like a 600 horsepower big V8 car should. So many cars going turbocharging smaller engines and they still have the power, but this one has the power and it has the sound. All right, I'm gonna launch it again here. Unbelievably fast, just insanely quick. The, the accelerator is tremendously responsive. Really, really wildly a fast car, just to an unbelievable level. You see the XE and you, you underestimate it. Well, you don't, you don't underestimate this one. I have to say one other thing that I'm very impressed with with this car is the steering and handling. The steering is tremendously precise. You turn the wheel just a little bit and this thing starts to just rocket in that direction. Very little body roll, very instant steering response, but more impressive is the handling. When you go around a corner and you push it hard through the corner, you really actually feel like the car is very balanced and very capable, very little roll, and it can keep going. You can see how this Nürburgring time develops itself. If they had just stuck this powertrain in the larger XJ luxury sedan, you'd have a very fast car, but you wouldn't have the poise and the overall package and kind of the handling capability of this car. And when you think about it that way, you start to understand why they chose the entry level Jaguar sedan rather than the larger XJ, because it makes for a more complete package factoring in handling and kind of sporty performance around corners. And so that's the Jaguar XE SV Project 8. Jaguar isn't exactly the brand known for making the most exciting cars, but I've been excited about this car ever since I first heard about it, and I'm thrilled that I got the chance to spend the day with this one. It truly is one of the most ridiculous, insane, amazing cars on sale today. And now it's time to give the Project 8 a Doug score.
Starting with the weekend categories and styling, I think the XE is a nice looking car, but all of the graphics are a bit of an acquired taste and it gets a 6 out of 10. Acceleration does 0 to 60 in 3.3 seconds and it gets a 9 out of 10. Handling is really sharp, among the best of any four-door vehicle and it gets a 7 out of 10. Fun Factor is excellent with an amazing sound and wonderful everything else. It's a total hoot and it gets an 8 out of 10. Finally, Cool Factor and the Project 8 is cool, but the sad truth is that most people just won't know what this car is and they'll think you tacked on that wing yourself. It gets a 6 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 36 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features. The XE has some cool stuff, but it's surprisingly lacking in tech and equipment and it gets a 6 out of 10. Comfort is worse than average with the tight sport seats and stiff suspension and it gets a 6 out of 10. Quality is good, everything is nice and it's normal for the class and it gets a 7 out of 10. Practicality is normal for a car like this and it gets a 5 out of 10. Finally, value, and the truth is, as much as I love this car, it's not the best value. It's slower in a straight line than a BMW M5 and vastly more expensive, and even a Tesla Model 3 performance would keep up 0 to 60. The Jaguar does have amazing handling, but for nearly 200 grand, it's a tough sell, and it gets a 5 out of 10 for a total daily score of 29 out of 50. Add it up, and the Doug score is 65 out of 100, which places the Project 8 here against other performance sedans. It's dead last, but there's an important thing to consider here. The Project 8 is near the top in weekend categories, and it was built in extremely limited numbers for ultra enthusiast drivers. All the rest of these cars are mass produced to be all rounders, but that's not the Project 8. It's a focused car for focused drivers, and in that, it succeeds. It's just really expensive. Ah!